court is now back in session. Miss Trixie, were you able to gather this manager? Yes, she is prepared. If you truly want this. Oh, I'd like to hear how she found this peculiar stick. She had to have been in the forest. And that means she may have done it. But Trixie's right. She isn't a Pegasus. There's no way she could have manipulated that cloud. <sighs> Expect for the worst, hope for the best. Name and occupation. You're really going to attempt to pin this on me, right? <clears throat> As you know, I've been watching the whole time, and I'm not impressed. Don't ignore Trixie. State your name and occupation for the record. Please be quiet. The grown-ups are speaking. You have no right sticking your nose in the law. What? Even to me, it's a mystery how you managed to put yourself on that bench. Uh, how dare you! It must really hurt that vanity of yours. Looking in the mirror every morning, seeing nothing but a washed-up charlatan with revenge as your only form of closure. It's kind of pathetic when you think about it. You! Does this pony have something against Trixie, Phoenix? Short answer, yes. You see... I know everything there is to know about you, Trixie. So what? That's actually kind of a flattering statement. Oh, really, now? Let's talk about poor little Trixie. Let's talk about how great and powerful you really are. Let's talk about what you really desire. Because unlike everyone else, I know. Uh, how did you... I know what drives the real Trixie to do what she does. It has nothing to do with her last visit, as she's led many of you to believe. That was just the icing on the cake. The Trixie we see right now is nothing but a helpless phony taking on this egotistical persona to cover up her pitiful insecurities. Her real talent should be pretending. Smoke and mirrors, that's all she is. And I'm not talking about her little magic show. As I said before, it's really pathetic. Oh? Have you finally run out of arrogant lies? Enough! Witness, state your name and occupation for the record. Sonata, former manager of the late Ace Swift. Now where was I? Oh yes, right. You were accusing me of being in that forest based off a vague testimony given by a vague witness. That witness says she saw me by the forest? I say I was in my hotel room all night. Now that brings me to you, right. I believe you broke into my hotel room with that pink pony. I wish to press charges against you both immediately. Here are some detailed photographs of both of their prints all around my room. I'm sure if you compare them, you'll get matching results. Oh, great. Here we go. Mr. Wright, is this true? I'll face the consequences of my actions later. No. Right now. You broke the law, and I want justice. Just as Trixie stated earlier, it's an unrelated crime, just like Mr. Cruz controls assault on me. And it shouldn't be brought up in the current case at hand. Mr. Wright, I'm shocked you would do something like this. But I didn't want to do it. I can't simply let actions like this go unpunished. What's the prosecution's stance on this matter? She doesn't look too hot. Uh, well... Well, I suppose if there are no objections, uh, Phoenix Wright and Pinkie Pie can face their charges in due time. Ha! <laughs> Score one for the good guys. <laughs> Whatever. See if I care. This outlandish accusation of yours is just going to fall flat on its face anyway. Sonata, Fluttershy gave a perfect description of you carrying the stick near the forest on the night of the murder. 
I'll say it again. I wasn't anywhere near the forest that night. I've got to tie her into this somehow. Your Honor, I'd like to hear what Sonata was doing that night in further detail. Hmm. Now that I've seen Miss Sonata's appearance, uh, the previous witness's description does seem to match up. Uh, Miss Sonata, please testify as to what you were doing the night of the murder. <sighs> if I must. I was settling in my hotel room after picking up some equipment for Ace. He wasn't at the hotel, so I figured he was practicing for the race. I went to bed and was woken up at 12 a.m. by the police knocking at my hotel room door. The police had informed me of Ace's fate. That witness must be mistaken. I wasn't anywhere near the forest that night. And I certainly wasn't carrying that golf club you keep waving around. So you were in your hotel room while the murder occurred? That is correct, Your Honor. That witness must have been seeing things because I didn't go anywhere near the Everfree Forest. She's lying. I hate to change the subject, but look at Trixie. Seems to not have really got to her. I feel kind of bad for her. Well, no matter. I have to focus on breaking this testimony. I was settling in my hotel room after picking up some equipment for Ace. Hold it! What kind of equipment? Athletic equipment. Knee pads, helmets, stuff like that. He played all kinds of sports. Speaking of equipment, any clue as to why he was wearing the lightning-proof suit that night? He wore it all the time with a race coming up. The outfit is quite uncomfortable from what I'm told, and he practiced wearing it before the race to get used to the discomfort. Do you have anyone to confirm you were shopping that day? No, I don't. Then this alibi of yours isn't looking too reliable at all. How would you wish me to prove it? The store is quite busy with the race coming up. I doubt they'd remember one customer from a few days ago. What about a receipt? You said you bought some items there. Without one, you could have been- I have it right here. Ah! You didn't think I'd come unprepared, did you? It says her items were rung in at 7.30 p.m. This proves she was shopping a little before the murder. There's still a big enough time frame to put her in the forest. He wasn't at the hotel, so I figured he was practicing for the race. I went to bed and was woken up at 12 a.m. by the police knocking at my hotel room door. Hold it! Weren't you concerned where he was? I was his manager, not his babysitter. That doesn't mean you shouldn't make an effort finding him, especially with his big race coming up soon. If you haven't noticed, I can't fly. There would be no point wasting my time searching for him when I can only search on land. Guess it would be a little hard to find someone who can fly while you're grounded. And what time did you go to sleep? 8.30. And that's around the time he was killed. If she really was in the forest that night, she has to be lying here. The police had informed me of Ace's fate. Hold it! How did you react to his death? I cried. You... cried? Yes, it's a complex secretomotor phenomenon characterized by the shedding of tears from the lacrimal apparatus without any irritation of the ocular structures. I know what crying is. I just can't see her crying. Like I said to you earlier, I got over it quickly. Those police who came to my door can confirm this as well. I've got to ask them if her tears were made out of icicles. That witness must be mistaken. I wasn't anywhere near the forest that night. Hold it! The witness is not mistaken. Mr. Wright, this same witness had a problem with her testimony yesterday. What makes you think she is not wrong this time? Because she identified you perfectly under Luna's light. I doubt with her secluded lifestyle she's ever seen you before that point. Ace was famous. She could have read a newspaper like Equestria Daily. I've had my picture published in there several times. Who knows? Maybe she's just describing me to shift the blame off her friend. You really think Fluttershy's one to lie? Why not? Didn't you accuse her of perjury just yesterday, right? <laughs> 
Since the prosecution doesn't seem to be up to speed, can you please put a stop to Mr. Wright's baseless claims against me, Your Honor? Ooh! Uh, yes! Uh, I must stop this line of questioning about the previous witness's credibility. It's alright. I just wanted a little more information. Time to go in for the coup de gras. And I certainly wasn't carrying that golf club you keep waving around. OBJECTION! Sonata, I'm very curious. About what? This stick. You claim you weren't carrying it. And I'll say again, I wasn't. But what I find odd here is what you called it in your testimony. I certainly wasn't carrying that golf club you keep waving around. Sonata, this stick looks nothing like a golf club. Nor has anyone referred it to one during the duration of the trial. It was a golf club at one time. You're correct about that. This thing is a golf club? Oh, uh, my apologies, but I really don't see it. That's because the end was broken off, Your Honor. I have reason to believe this strange metal object I found on the scene of the crime is the missing piece. Hmm... It does resemble a golf club if that piece were to be put on the end of the stick. But right now, it's nothing but a dilapidated stick. Tell us, Sonata, how did you know this was a golf club? <laughs> Do you think you're some sort of knight in shining armor, come to save the day? Because you're not. You're just another bottom-feeding defense attorney pointing out trivial details. Mr. Wright has pointed out a crucial flaw. How did you know this mangled stick was a golf club? Defense attorneys fabricate the most interesting little fairy tales to protect criminals. You know, something's wrong when a talking unicorn accuses you of telling fairy tales. Miss Sonata, please answer the question. I was mistaken. I have seen this stick before, as a golf club. Remember I said I was shopping for sports equipment that day? I saw a golf club at the store with the same unique handle shape, namely that P on the end of it, like the one you're holding. You saw it at the store? Yes. Like I said, he's just admirably trying to defend a murderer. Oh, did I say admirably? I meant shamefully. I just got the strangest sense of deja vu. What do you mean? Her phony baloney excuse reminded me of another case. You can prove she didn't see the golf club at the store? Yeah, just watch me. Your Honor, she could not have seen this golf club at the store. Really? Yes, and I have proof. Do go on, Mr. Wright. You see, Sonata couldn't have seen this golf club because it's one of a kind. Huh? Let me introduce the court to the Pinky Iron Mark V, the very first innovation patented by a one Pinkamina Diane Pie. Oh, right, that was Pinky's golf club. I see. Wait a minute. If it's her first invention, what happened to Mark One through Four? Uh, never mind that. The point is, it's impossible for Sonata to have seen this club in the store because it was crafted by Pinkie Pie and lost in the forest when she tried giving it a test run. Not only does this prove Sonata here couldn't have seen the club at the store, but also, the only time she could have seen it whole was in the forest after Pinkie lost it. May I also remind you, Sonata, she lost it in the forest a week ago, while you only arrived in Ponyville three days ago. The only place you could have seen it whole was the Everfree Forest. <laughs> Miss Sonata, explain this! I, I... I... I finally broke her. Let's see how she talks her way out of this one. <laughs> Actually, I don't need to say anything. I'm afraid you do. The defense has proven that you've seen this golf club while it was still one piece. But do you remember why I was dragged in here? All because of that other witness. Let's not beat around the bush, shall we? 
It's obvious you're trying to say I was in the forest that night. Right? Right? Then tell me, why didn't Fluttershy see me leave? She said she saw me walking towards Ponyville, but testified yesterday she saw nothing leave the forest at all. There has to be some explanation. You're trying to plant me in that forest based on her testimony. Therefore, you need an explanation as to why she didn't see me leave. The broken golf club should be enough proof. Gilda confirmed it. Okay, I'll humor you. Let's assume I was near the forest. Not in it, just near it. Since we are to disregard Fluttershy's testimony as she didn't see me leave, who is to say Rainbow Dash or Gilda didn't carry the golf club and I found it there? I don't believe picking up a stick is a crime. Well, she does bring up some valid points, right? I can't allow you to continue accusing her if you cannot provide stronger evidence she was inside that forest. But your client's verdict has been handed down. And unless you're willing to provide a substantial amount of evidence against this manager to convince me otherwise, I won't hesitate to end the trial right now. <sighs> what do I do? Actually, Phoenix, I think I know how she did it. B but I could be wrong. How? It's highly unlikely, but Sonata could have teleported. Teleported? Yes. But like I said, it's very unlikely. It's a very advanced unicorn spell. Not many unicorns even know how to do it. Unicorns like Trixie and I can perform it without as many repercussions since our cutie marks specialize in magic. I actually think she does know it. You think this witness knows how to teleport, Mr. Wright? These pictures of a book I found in her hotel room. Hey, you can't confirm that book belongs to me! Would you like to go through the arduous process we went through yesterday to prove it does? Knowing what it will reveal, I have a feeling you don't. Does that book belong to you, witness? Y yes it does What are you doing? Why don't you tell every pony about her blackmailing? Because she obviously doesn't want it revealed. I can use it to make her sing like a canary. Guess she should have thought about that before trying to get me arrested. Force her to tell the truth about the smaller details, and eventually they'll start piling up on her. Good thinking, Phoenix. It's no good to us anyway until we get her in the forest. Her blackmailing won't really help us on why Ace was killed. Right, Miss Sparkle, can you please stop whispering over there and tell us about this book? Sorry, Your Honor. This is an advanced spellbook. If we can find a teleportation spell inside, it proves Sonata could have escaped the forest without using the entrance. But these pages, Mr. Wright, I can't make a lick of sense out of them. Well, I'm not familiar with these characters. We have a magically adept unicorn with an astute mind for the subject right here to confirm if there's a teleportation spell in this book. Twilight Sparkle. Miss Sparkle, uh, can you please confirm if there is a teleportation spell in this book as Mr. Wright claims? Yes, Your Honor, I can. Objection! No, you don't! Her decoding what it says would be biased. Hey, I won't lie. Sorry, but this court can't take that chance. You being friends with the defense completely ruins your credibility. Any other suggestions? We could get a professor from Canterlot's Magic Academy to confirm it, if I can't. It shouldn't take long once I find the spell. I'll just have Spike send a copy of the inscription from the book to the Academy. Very well. I'll grant a short recess for the defense to analyze this book in the photograph and give time for Miss Sparkle to gather her findings. The spell Twilight Sparkle located in the book was indeed the relocation spell. It was also verified by the head professor in Cantalot's main magic academy. Hmm... So there is the possibility she may have teleported from the forest. So what? The spell is in my book, but you can't prove I actually know this spell. 
I don't know how to execute it. Are you saying you don't know how to teleport? If I owned a book on quantum physics, would that mean I had a master's degree in quantum physics? Hmm. Good point. Hey, I actually own a great, insightful book on quantum physics, and I don't mean to brag, but <laughs> I know a lot about quantum physics. And I study it regularly. You never know when you might need quantum physics to get you out of a jam. It's a really fascinating subject, and I take great pride and passion in... Uh, <laughs> sorry. Many unicorns like me have a hard time executing that rare spell. A good percentage just don't have it in them to do it. It's even more difficult for one such as myself, as my talent isn't magic like the defense's co-counsel and the prosecution. And besides that, even if I was able to teleport... Riddle me this, right. If you're claiming I teleported, why would I not teleport back to my hotel room? Huh? If you're accusing me of secretly being in the forest, why would I compromise everything by teleporting near Fluttershy's abode, leaving myself exposed and vulnerable, not being able to use magic? Uh, you do what now? <sighs> Since you seem a great deal ignorant to this, perhaps your co-counsel would like to explain this spell in a little more detail, as she seems to be an expert on it. Uh, okay, it works like this. When performing a teleportation spell, you need three things. A mental image of your destination, stalwart concentration, and natural magic talent. A less talented unicorn could learn the teleportation spell and perform it well enough to make one big jump from deep inside the forest to almost anywhere in Ponyville, but their magic would be completely diminished afterwards. Hmm, so what you're saying is, if you were guilty of being in the forest that night and didn't want to be caught... Why would I teleport right in front of Fluttershy's house, out in the open, so she could potentially catch me, and not to my hotel room? Do I look that stupid? I hate to say it, but she's right. If she really did teleport, why would she make her destination out in the open? The limits on teleportation are you can only jump to places you've seen with your own eyes. It doesn't make any sense she'd teleport to somewhere she'd get caught. And we know Sonata must have been in that hotel room beforehand. She was Ace's manager. There's got to be some explanation for this. Seeing as you do not have any proof as to why Fluttershy didn't see me leave the forest, may I please go now? I've had enough of this three-ring circus you call a trial. <laughs> Miss Trixie, may I ask what is so funny? I thought I shut you up earlier. Oh, it's just that Trixie knows of a reason why this witness didn't teleport all the way back to her hotel room. Y you do? But why are you... Why are you helping the defense? You need to be tough of manners, you impudent hussy. No pony, and I mean no pony, disrespects the great and powerful Trixie. This is exactly why she shouldn't be prosecuting. Looks like the Trixie we all know and love is back. But why is she helping us? I don't think she's doing it to help us, more so to defend her pride. Either way, I'm not complaining. Let's just see where this goes. Miss Trixie, you have an idea as to why the witness here didn't teleport all the way back to the hotel? Trixie certainly does, Your Honor. During Trixie's extravagant magic show, the grand finale involves teleportation. Trixie would use her magnificent, unrivaled powers to teleport behind the audience, letting off a display of fireworks and other grand visuals to put the crowd in a state of sheer awe. Well, aren't you special? Since the advent of a lavender loser, Trixie has received some... Uh, tough 
crowds. Yeah, Trixie's talking about you, Twilight Snarkle. You and your stupid bangs. Twilight Snarkle? I know. It's the worst insult I've ever heard. And what's worse is she keeps attacking my bangs. What's wrong with my bangs? They match my tail. I don't know. I actually thought your fringe looked kind of cute. Trixie has had tomatoes and an assortment of other fruit and vegetables tossed at her during her show. Oh, of course. Huh? I know where Trixie is going with this. Care to enlighten me? Just listen. During one of her shows, Trixie was preparing for her teleportation finale when a wretched apple hit Trixie and interrupted her. Then what happened? Trixie ended up in the middle of the crowd instead of behind them. What? How does that work? When a unicorn loses focus of a teleportation spell while channeling magic, as Dorky Bangs mentioned, results will be random. You'll end up anywhere between point A and B. Trixie isn't saying that sad excuse of a unicorn on the stand bumbled it up, though. Just that it's a possible explanation for why she ended up where she did. I don't believe this. You're doing everything wrong! Speaking of wrong, the ball is in your court now. Whether that's what happened or not is for you to prove. I'm still a little shocked Trixie just did that. Me too. But it's useless unless we can prove something interrupted Sonata while she prepared to teleport. How can we prove something like that? I've been looking through our evidence and I don't see a thing. Actually, I think I got it. <laughs> Your Honor, I think I know what could have startled Sonata. And what is that, Mr. Wright? The answer is obvious. It was the lightning bolt. Ooh, that makes sense. That sound would have startled anyone, especially if they were in a dark, spooky forest at the time. Exactly. You sure you want to suggest that, Mr. Wrong? The first lightning bolt struck at 8.40, meaning Sonata would have a perfect alibi. She would have been preparing to leave the forest before any of the lightning struck. That is, if you're really trying to pin this on her. What about the second one? We've been through this trite. Three witnesses testified to not hearing it. We can still see without a doubt that lightning bolt did not make a sound that night. But if you would like to suggest that the first lightning bolt startled her, Trixie's all fine and dandy with that. Hmm, it seems Sonata has a tighter alibi than before. That can't be! Just look at her! She's sweating bullets right now! If you had a Neanderthal with a goofy haircut and an evil purple-shaded nerd lobbing false accusations at you, would you be sitting there with a happy smile on your face? Uh, she has a point, right? This is such a glorious day for Trixie. Trixie has finally exacted her revenge on Twilight Snarkle, had a dangerous criminal banished, and put the stupid four-eyed bimbo in her place. Can you say hat trick? It's a good thing Trixie had confirmation of that first bolt. Otherwise, all this wouldn't have been possible. I got it! I know what startled Sonata here. Not only that, but I can clear up another mystery, too. Uh, please do go on, Mr. Wright. Let's think back to yesterday. We had a certain little witness confirm the time of the first bolt for us. Oh, you mean that cute filly? Yes, Your Honor. Apple Bloom. Apple Bloom was lost in the forest for quite some time, when all of a sudden, she bumped into something. We've already concluded that was irrelevant information, though. Not exactly. Because I think the thing Apple Bloom bumped into is right there on the stand. Ugh. Let's bring ourselves back to that night. Apple Bloom was lost in the forest and bumped into something she couldn't see, making it jump from what she described. Suddenly she sees a large flash of light she thought was lightning, but was actually the teleportation spell. Uh-oh, looks like he found you out. <laughs> Sonata was preparing to teleport to the hotel room, no doubt, but she was startled by Apple Bloom bashing into her out of nowhere and lost her focus. Apple Bloom ended up being an unintentional stowaway during Sonata's incomplete teleportation spell. The interruption sent them both not to Sonata's room, 
but right near Fluttershy's cottage. That's why Fluttershy didn't see Apple Bloom leave the forest. Sonata brought her out by teleporting. Drained after using an advanced spell and being next to a blind, disoriented filly, Sonata had no choice but to run eastward with a golf club in her mouth. Apple Bloom, however, walked home to Sweet Apple Acres in the south. This is ridiculous. You have no proof I did this. No point in denying it anymore. We all know you were in that forest, four eyes. So why don't you be a good little pony and come clean? All we need is possibility. Unless you care to explain where you've seen that golf club before? I... I... This also explains how the filly escaped the forest of detective. Exactly. This is the best explanation we have. You're caught, Sonata. Time to face the music. What were you doing in the forest that night? I refuse to testify. I reserve the right to remain silent in any case where my testimony could lead to self-incrimination. Oh, please. Perhaps Trixie can once again enlighten every pony. You see, our sophisticated-looking business pony here has a gloomy secret. Trixie's brilliant mind was able to find this out yesterday, after the conclusion of the analysis of that filthy griffin feather. This has to do with why she was at the forest? Yes, it does. Little Miss Sonata here is a dirty blackmailer. N no! Wh what Wait, you knew about that? Of course Trixie knew. Why do you ask, Mr. Wrong? I was kind of saving that information for my ace in the hole. Too late, Trixie beat you to it. Trixie knew those pictures of rainbow trash had something to do with this. So Trixie simply asked the local developers for a record of their clients. Hmm. Why didn't I think of that? And they told Trixie it was you, Four Eyes. Trixie simply connected the dots to why this manager of an undefeated athlete would develop pictures like those. She and the victim were in cahoots with each other, blackmailing Rainbow Trash and probably many more throughout the late Mr. Swift's career. Or I ask, if the prosecution on defense knew about this, well, why didn't they bring it up sooner? Trixie could have spoken for Mr. Wrong, but she didn't because the situation didn't call for it. Trixie didn't believe there was a way this witness could have been in the forest, but we seem to have proven otherwise. And I couldn't because, uh, she was blackmailing me. You let her blackmail you? <laughs> wow, you really are a loser. Miss Sonata, were you blackmailing the defense's client? No, I wasn't. I would never do anything like that. These papers say otherwise. I found all these in Sonata's hotel room, and this particular letter, blackmailing my client, matches Sonata's writing. There you have it. Trixie has used her brilliance to triumph over a snide liar. Miss Sonata, you should be ashamed of yourself. <sighs> Taking advantage of others like that? You're despicable. Spare me. You've finally proven I was in the forest and that I was blackmailing your client. But that hardly makes me a murderer. We'll see about that. Let's hear what you were doing in the forest that night. There's no escaping either. You've already cast too much suspicion over yourself to just waltz out of here. Oh, and Mr. Wrong. What? Let Trixie make one thing crystal clear. Trixie still knows for a fact Rainbow Trash is the true culprit of this crime. Then why did you... Because Trixie needs the correct facts before she can properly prosecute that Rainbow Loser. In fact, this whole blackmail revelation sets that motive you so desperately wanted before. Rainbow Trash killed him because the cheater and his bimbo manager were blackmailing her. Gee, here I thought she was just being nice. Whatever. I wasn't planning on leaving anyway. I'll tell you why I was in there that night, and show you why it still doesn't matter. Don't sit there so comfortably, right? This is far from over. And Trixie? Hmm? I dislike you. Just thought I'd reiterate that in case it wasn't clear enough.
Oh, thank you. <laughs> Trixie gets that a lot. That wasn't a compliment, Trixie. No point in hiding it. Ace and I were blackmailing Rainbow Dash. We ordered her to meet in the Everfree Forest. I got there long before Ace, and I hid in some foliage near the meeting place. Rainbow Dash showed up and made negotiations with Ace. She declined and flew up high, hitting a storm cloud she put there in foresight. I watched as a lightning bolt hit Ace directly on one of the exposed parts on his suit. It sent him flying a few feet, as the prosecution stated. I got out of the forest as fast as I could. That is all that happened. This changes nothing. This still doesn't explain why you took the golf club. I still deny touching that. I only saw it on the crime scene. You aren't too smart, are you? You were the last pony in there, and it was found outside the forest. Not to mention you're the only suspect. There's no way Fluttershy could have seen the handle before that point, other than when she saw you walking with it. Then maybe she's the one who took it out. You said your pink accomplice lost the accursed thing in that forest a week ago. Therefore, Fluttershy could have witnessed her lose it. The forest is near her cottage, after all. Though she saw me going towards town, there is a large time frame where she was alone. You have no way to tie me to that golf club other than what she claims she saw. I was simply in the forest to oversee our deal with Rainbow Dash, who I then witnessed kill Ace. Who does she think she's fooling? Um, Phoenix? I don't mean to interrupt you, but... But what? There's something that rubs me the wrong way about the testimony she gave. Huh? There is? What is it? Call it intuition. I think it has something to do with what I found yesterday. I better look through the evidence Twilight gave me. No point in hiding it. Ace and I were blackmailing Rainbow Dash. We ordered her to meet in the Everfree Forest. Hold it! Why would you want to meet in the forest? Surely you know how dangerous it is in there. Ace and I personally liked making these deals in secluded locations. We couldn't risk flies on the wall listening in. And this is how you had your victims cooperate. You were able to find their weaknesses using that talent of yours. It's probably why he was really wearing that lightning proof suit. Not to prepare for the race, but to attempt to conceal his identity from Rainbow Dash in the Dark Forest. As you just naturally blended in with your dark colors. That's correct. It's worked up to this point. Well, besides two individuals who went against my terms. One being the defendant, the other... I'm sure you know who that is, right? Don't you? But both of them are going to get their just desserts soon enough. Objection! As much as Trixie would love to see you both arrested, we honestly don't care how you cheat and manipulate. Let's get back to what you saw in the forest, Four Eyes. Cheat and manipulate. Do you really think you have the right to judge me? What do you say we all talk about you and your pitifully weak vendetta against the defense's co-counsel over there? That's right, Twilight. It stems past the humiliation she suffered from you. Isn't that right, Trixie? Don't even bother trying to pull that one again, lady. Trixie was a fool to let some blackmailing hussy get to her the first time. Even if Trixie has to get you off the hook for Mr. Wrong's murder accusation, you're still getting locked up for your other crimes. Trixie hopes you enjoy stale bread, because that's all you're going to be eating for a long time. Hear the one! Miss Sonata, please continue your testimony. What are they talking about? I'll tell you later. You've got to focus on winning here. I got there long before Ace, and I hid in some foliage near the meeting place. 
Rainbow Dash showed up and made negotiations with Ace. Hold it! And what were these negotiations? For her to drop out of the race. Why didn't you just have her lose? Why have her drop out completely? Several reasons. Because of her performance at another event, it's clear she's the better athlete in every way, shape, and form. But the main reason was because of her arrogance and pride. If she were to participate in that race, there was a chance her competitive nature would kick in and she would throw away all bets and try to win, even at the price of those pictures being exposed. I've only known her for a day and a half, and that really sounds like something Rainbow Dash would do. She declined and flew up high, hitting a storm cloud she put there in foresight. I watched as a lightning bolt hit Ace directly on one of the exposed parts on his suit. It sent him flying a few feet, as the prosecution stated. Hold it! I'd like to ask you what you witnessed here, Sonata. Unlike Gilda, you actually saw this, correct? Every solitary detail, yes. How were you able to see all this? I'm sure Rainbow Dash would have seen you if you were illuminating the area with your horn. That's because I didn't. The lightning itself lit up the area after she set it off. In that split second, I was able to see everything that had happened. Would you care to share these details? After the negotiations went sour, Rainbow flew up and hit that cloud. As you know, there are some exposed parts on that racing suit. I saw Ace look up, bewildered at what she was doing, and the bolt hit him directly on his neck. As Gilda claimed the prosecution theorized, the lightning's impact hurtled his body a few feet. His neck, huh? I got out of the forest as fast as I could. That is all that happened. This changes nothing. OBJECTION! Looks like you saw things wrong here, Sonata. Or maybe you're just lying. What are you talking about? Something else should have happened there. Something else? Detailed right here in this autopsy report, there was a burn mark on the back of the victim's neck. Sonata, if you watch these events transpire, how did he come to acquire this scar? I left the forest right away. How should I know? I don't think so. You didn't leave the forest right away. How would you know that? Do you remember what time Apple Bloom got out? Nine o'clock. Cursity of Sonata. Seeing as the lightning bolt hit 840, and it's only a 15 minute walk to the entrance, that leaves a long time frame where you were still inside the forest. In fact, it's even larger considering you admitted to teleporting out. So I'll ask again, where did he get that scar? She did explain where he got it. The lightning itself must have struck in his exposed neck. OBJECTION! Not according to another detail Sonata shared. She stated, I saw Ace look up, bewildered at what she was doing, and the bolt hit him directly on the neck. You're right! It would have left a mark on the front of his neck if he was looking up. <sighs> Care to explain this, Four Eyes? That mark isn't from the lightning bolt. That mark was from the day before the incident. Ace was in a dangerous race inside of Freet's volcano and must have picked up the nasty scar from some embers. Well, that could explain it. His schedule confirms that he was indeed racing in that volcano the day before he came into Ponyville. It would have still been fresh. This is just stupid. Of all places you could race, why would any pony with a sane mind feel the need to race in a volcano? High risk, high reward. The prize was a treasure known as the Flame Dragon Ruby. And I bet you two won that through cheating, huh? We did. Problem? Shut up, wrong! She gave you a good explanation for the burn. Do you have a doctor's note to confirm this injury? He didn't like doctors, so it doesn't really come as a surprise that he didn't want to get it checked out. So you're saying he had this burn mark on his neck before he even arrived in Ponyville? That's exactly what I'm saying. 
Mr. Wright is doing what defense attorneys do best, trying to make something out of irrelevant details. Wait! Huh? There is something wrong here. He couldn't have had that burn mark before the incident. Uh, Twilight, I'm supposed to be the lawyer here. Stick to the book, Snarkle. He got that scar from his race in the volcano. No, he didn't! And I have proof! Uh, Twilight, you really shouldn't... A pony named Cruise Control gave this to me yesterday. <sighs> and what about it? It's a picture of the victim entering the forest. With the timestamp on it, it shows it was taken 20 minutes before the crime even took place. What are you trying to prove here, Snarkle? Every pony knows when he entered the forest. I'm not trying to prove he went in there. Look closer and you'll see exactly what I'm trying to prove. <laughs> you see it, don't you? There's no burn mark on the back of his neck. Oh boy! She's right! This proves he acquired that scar while he was in the forest. Oh my gosh, did everybody see that? That felt so exhilarating! This is so exciting! I found a flaw in her testimony! Do you all think I sounded professional enough? Oh, I'm going to tell the princess about this! Twilight, relax! Uh, <laughs> sorry. I got a little carried away. Maybe a little. But thank you anyway. Let me take the reins from here. Sonata, as my co-counsel has pointed out, he couldn't have acquired that scar prior to entering the forest. It was from the golf club. The golf club? I'd like to hear how this golf club resulted in a burn mark. When Rainbow Dash set the cloud off, the bolt was large enough to hit Ace as well as the ground. The bolt had started a fire, and it was my burden to put it out. He fell to the ground, neck landing on the golf club and breaking it. That's how the burn mark got there. I moved the body and stick aside and put out the fire myself. I ran away from the crime scene after experiencing such an incident, but returned later when I realized I forgot to take the golf club. So you really did take the golf club? Yes, I did. Problem? You were just denying earlier you even touched it. That's because I tampered with the crime scene. That would have me, and is going to have me, put away for quite some time. Then why admit it now? Because I'm already going to jail for my victory methods, what's a little longer to clear this outlandish murder accusation you're trying to put on me? Hmm, but why would you carry this golf club out? Because I touched it when I moved it aside. I wanted to remove all evidence I was there. Okay, focus, Phoenix. She's constantly revising the story. She has to run out of excuses sooner or later. When Rainbow Dash set the cloud off, the bolt was large enough to hit Ace as well as the ground. Hold it! How big was this fire? Quite large. You were at the clearing, were you not? You probably noticed the scarring on the ground. That's how big it was before I put it out. How did you manage to put it out? I used Ace's bag to beat it down. Wait a minute. If you took the golf club because you touched it, why did you leave the bag behind? It didn't matter. I've touched that bag a million times before. Ace's butler too, his stylist, and even his mother when she packs his lunches. His mother still packs his lunch? How old is he? Twenty-five. I'm just gonna pretend she didn't answer that. The point is, there were tons of indications others have touched it aside from me. And I wanted Rainbow Dash to pay for not only not following our terms, but killing Ace. So I purposely left those pictures behind. The bolt had started a fire, and it was my burden to put it out. 
Why did you feel the need to put it out? Being environmentally friendly? Drawing attention to the scene was my main concern. I see. If someone were to see that fire, it would attract other ponies, and you would be caught on the crime scene. Exactly. But it seemed that it did not only He fell to the ground, neck landing on the golf club and breaking. That's how the burn mark got there. Oh! He fell on the club? I heard it snap as he landed on top of it. So I guess so. And that's how the burn got there. I hurried to the flaming area and tried to put out the fire. His body was in the way so I moved him and the stick out of the flames. The fire must have heated up the metal on the stick, broke and left that burn mark on his neck. That would mean the body wasn't hurtled by the lightning. Sonata was the one who moved both him and the stick to the dirt patch where Gilda discovered it. I moved the body and stick aside and put out the fire myself. OBJECTION! Sonata, what you just said doesn't line up. Uh, why not? You said the golf club was laying in the fire. But just look at it. It smoldered and burnt beyond any recognition. If Ace was really laying in the fire for as long as the golf club, the exposed parts on the suit should be all burnt, not just a small one from the stick. Flesh burns faster than metal. Even the suit itself would have taken damage from those flames. Oh my! You are correct, Mr. Wright! Your explanation doesn't make any sense, Sonata. Stop trying to turn anthills into mountains. This is no anthill. A lot of things don't line up with these events if we take this into consideration. The victim could not have been laying in that fire. His burn should be as severe as the likes of the golf club. But all we have is one burn mark on the back of his neck. So this can only mean one thing. The victim was alive after the first bolt came down. Objection! This is stupid. The first bolt is the only one that could have killed him. OBJECTION! That's where you're wrong. I believe I know what happened based on a piece of evidence. What evidence? I think there was a struggle of some kind. Again, this is the most foolish foolery of your foolish fool brain in that foolish spiky cranium of yours. How could he have had a struggle with lightning? I think this lightning has been one big red herring all along. What basis do you suggest the victim had the struggles, right? Let's review what we know. The burn mark on the back of his neck. The golf club is really the only thing that could have done it. I have no doubt it was laying in that fire for quite some time, which in turn heated the metal. Next, the golf club itself. It was to be assumed it broke when he fell on top of it. But the body should have been just as burned as the golf club if you were laying in that fire to render it to what it is now. There's no way the body could be like it is if it were really hit by the first bolt. We find ourselves back at this question. How did the golf club burn him? Explain. The only answer I can draw is someone hit him with it. And I think we all know who that someone is. Are you suggesting she hit him? That's exactly what I'm suggesting. You just keep getting dumber and dumber, you know that? Then perhaps you can explain where he got the burn mark. Remember, he had to have received it while he was alive in the forest based on this picture. Uh, I... <sighs> uh, couldn't the defendant have used the stick to hit him? Well, I just can't see why his manager would assault him like this. <laughs> He's right. Rainbow Trash could have easily hit him. They have those pictures of her, after all. It's really sad when you have to get bailed out by the judge. Rainbow could not have done that. She was long gone after the lightning came down. Yeah, according to Gilda. But do you remember she gave up Chase to look for her package? That's true, Rainbow could have gone back while Gilda was looking for her package. But I'm not talking about that. Sonata here was the only one who could have used that golf club to hit him. And you of all ponies should know why, Trixie. What do you mean? Well, how could she be the only one? Very simple, Your Honor. 
Lily's Guide to Ponies? Is that a children's book? Yes, it is. I, uh, gave that to you to read, not to, uh, present as, um, evidence. Trixie read that one while she was still learning to speak. How dare you bring such a childish item in and make a mockery of this court? Coming from Miss Withered Hat and Wizard Cloak. Uh, hold on a sec. I'm just using this as a visual aid to make my point. This better be good. Uh, well, <laughs> this book is pretty small. It details the different types of ponies in Equestria. Right here on page one, unicorns use magic. And we see an illustration of a cute little unicorn playing with toys, using her horn to move them. Do you see what I'm getting at here? If that club was hot enough to burn his neck, any physical contact with it would have burned whomever picked it up. So that completely rules out Rainbow Dash and Gilda. And even if they did pick up the stick while it was cooled down, it wouldn't matter. It wouldn't be hot anymore. Thus not being able to leave that mark. No! That would be the case if you were anyone. Or, <clears throat> any pony but a unicorn. Sonata is the only one who could have used it as a weapon. For the simple fact she could have picked it up without touching it using a levitation spell. Don't even bother saying you don't know that spell either, Sonata. It's one of the simplest of unicorn spells. I've even seen you doing it picking up that notepad of yours. That leaves two questions, Sonata. Why would you hit your longtime business partner, and how did he die of electrocution? To tell the truth, I don't have an answer for the latter. But I may have the one to why you hit him. But this is wrong. She couldn't have done it, why would she? She was his assistant. Weren't you the one who said the motive doesn't matter, Trixie? You! But unlike you, I think it does matter. And I'll gladly explain what I think her motive for striking him with the golf club was. Tell me, Sonata, the reason you hit him was this, wasn't it? You were planning on backing out of your dubious blackmailing deeds, weren't you? As it says in your letter of resignation here, you probably showed this to Ace right after your deal with Rainbow went bad. I don't think Ace was too happy with your decision. This letter was torn in half. Half was found by Fluttershy's cottage, most likely blown away by the wind. While the other you must have recovered, as I found it in your hotel room. You couldn't just throw it away. Someone might find it. So you kept it in your room, while the police were busy investigating the crime scene. That's probably why you got so angry when Pinky and I intruded. You were afraid we might have discovered the meaning behind the letter. Also, the reason you didn't have us arrested on the spot. The police might have confiscated my evidence, including the torn letter, and connected it to you. But what's the motive, Mr. Wright? Ace probably wasn't too thrilled about his partner in crime giving up the ghost on their business, which is why he tore the letter in half after reading it. He didn't want to give it up, and in turn, didn't want you publicly disclosing what you two were doing. Now, I doubt branding him with a hot stick was enough to kill him and no doubt he'd be angrier afterwards. There's no way you could prepare teleporting when engaged in an argument like that. So what happened after, Sonata? There's no way you can't know. The first and second lightning bolt could not have killed him based on the evidence we have. So what killed him, Sonata? There's nobody left to blame for his death but yourself. Rainbow Dash being long gone after the first bolt came down, Gilda searching for her package, and Apple Bloom lost in the forest whom later you brought out. You're the only one left who could have done it. But if you're saying she killed him, how could she have electrocuted him? Trixie, you must know as well as I do that there are some spells out there capable of electrocution. But artificial electricity isn't strong enough to kill. Given the situation she was in, being threatened by him, it could have caused a magic surge. And the fact he was weakened after being hit with a blazing hot blunt object that could have caused head trauma, the jolt could have been enough to stop his heart. She'd also have the ability to aim it at one of the exposed areas on the suit. Not only from examining the suit, but the magic illuminating the area where she conducted the spell. You, you can't just say she did this! If Ace was really threatening her, why would she not just run away? 
Resorting to violence as a first option is totally illogical. She couldn't outrun him. He was an athlete. He could have easily caught her without even trying. And I doubt they just talked things over and made up after she hit him by the fact we have a dead body. <sighs> There's no way the second bolt could have done it being a dud as Trixie uncovered. And even if it wasn't a dud, it would have had to hit him in midair to not make a noise, which is impossible due to the protective suit. There's no way out of it. Sonata must have electrocuted him somehow between the time frame the first bolt came down and when Gilda moved the body. Miss Sonata, what do you have to say to all this? It's amazing what one little mistake ended up costing me. What? When I first spoke with you, I noticed. Your eyes showed a lot of determination and resourcefulness. That's one of the things I look at first. Eyes alone show what someone is like more than any other part of the body. They really are the window to the soul. No! It wasn't you! You didn't do it! It was Rainbow Trash! It's why I wear these glasses. They aren't correctional. They're purely cosmetic. Though they're transparent, I feel like they shield me. I was afraid someone would find out who I am. Find some weakness. Just like what you were doing. Exactly. Stop! You didn't do it! I suppose my weakness was pity. That's what made me write up that letter you hold in your hands, right? The guilt of what you were doing to those innocent athletes caught up to you, didn't it? Yes. <laughs> that night, we arranged for Rainbow Dash to meet us in the forest. Time for negotiations! Forget it! I'm not doing it! Do it or else! I don't care about that. Besides, I've got a better idea. What? Enjoy the parting gift! <laughs> Smell you later, sucker! Ace! I thought you said she would do it, Sonata! I, I don't know what went wrong. Ah! Never mind! Quick, put out that fire! Use your bag to smother it! I think we got all the flames. Uh, this is just perfect! That little upstart is gonna ruin everything! She won't tell. There's no way she can afford telling anyone about those pictures. Then why didn't she cooperate? Do you realize we're sunk if she opens her mouth? <sighs> it could still work out. I just have to beat her the old-fashioned way. That Sonic Rainbow thing was probably just over-exaggerated. Right? Yeah. What's with you? You've been like that since we got here. Like what? All dodgy. And you mope whenever we talk. There was actually something I wanted to tell you after this whole thing went through. What is it? I was going to give you this. But perhaps it's better if I tell you. Tell me what? I can't help you do this anymore. What? These scandals we're pulling, I think we've gone too far. Too far? Pfft, it's not like any pony is getting hurt. No, we're exploiting vulnerabilities and weaknesses of innocent athletes just for our own fame and fortune. What exactly are you trying to say here, Sonata? Either you come clean and tell the truth about how you've been winning all this time, or I... I quit. Are you joking? You can't quit! I can't do this without you! Then... Then you'll go down with me! If I'm caught, you'll be caught too! You're just as guilty! I'm sorry, even if that may be the case, so be it. I can't do this anymore. No! Ace, calm down. We can't go back now! A ace You're not going anywhere, Sonata! What are you doing? You met an unfortunate fate in the forest. What? A ferocious beast got you and ended your life. No, stop! Don't come any closer! I then fell into a depressed state and couldn't race anymore. 
No one will notice my performance drop because I was forced to retire because you died. <laughs> my dear Sonata, I'm so very sorry. But I'm afraid I must ask you for one more thing. Farewell, Sonata. Help! <laughs> You're dead! In a situation like that, you don't really have time to think. I knew I couldn't run. It was hardly even question. Ace was undeniably faster. And I couldn't teleport. That took too much time and too much concentration. The only thing left to do then was to defend myself. I reached out with my magic and took hold of the nearest object, that disfigured, smoldering remnant of a golf club, and swung it as forcefully as I could. It hit the back of his neck, still hot enough to leave a nasty burn. The club snapped in two and Ace shrugged the whole thing off like it was nothing. When he looked at me then, that last time, he was angry. I dropped the broken pieces of the smoldering golf club and let them fall to the ground, and resorted to the only thing I had left, directing the full force of my magic power in his direction towards one of the exposed parts of the suit. What I had not taken into account was a magic surge which uncontrollably amplifies magic, and it may have let loose more than I had intended. After that, what frightened me most was not Ace and his uncontrollable anger or even the fear of death, but that the force around me had grown entirely silent. He was lying on the ground. The spell had hurtled him a few feet. I ran away from the clearing as fast as I could. I couldn't use any spells of any kind, not being able to concentrate after what I had just done. I just ran away in complete darkness. When I realized he wasn't following me, I had to see what had happened. About ten minutes after the whole ordeal, I cautiously went back to the clearing, and though it was dark, I saw the silhouette of his body lying there, lifeless. It didn't take me long to realize he was dead. Being caught for blackmailing was one thing, but there was no way I wanted to be caught as a murderer. Even if I could argue it was in self-defense, I'd have no clear-cut proof he was going to attack me. I'd be banished. I formulated a plan to take everything on the crime scene and make it look as if Rainbow Dash had done it. I quickly gathered up the golf club I struck him with, and the half of my resignation letter I still had. After I was all done, I went back into the forest trying to calm down and prepare a teleportation back to my hotel room. But, as you all know now, while I prepared that teleportation, that child bumped into me. And, just as Trixie said, it was enough to corrupt my destination. Both Applebloom and I ended up a little ways from the forest entrance near Fluttershy's cottage. I was completely vulnerable. I couldn't use magic after that jump, so I just grabbed the stick and ran. I took a shortcut through the park. My heart was beating a mile a minute, and I wasn't really watching where I was going. I tripped on the bridge and dropped that stick in the lake. Since I was unable to use magic, I couldn't retrieve it, so I just left it down there. Once I got to my hotel, I... I tried to convince myself that I didn't do it. That's actually the reason I hadn't reported you earlier, Mr. Wright. Why? I knew you were starting to become suspicious of me when you saw some of those items lying around my room. I needed to throw you off my tail. After Wright and his friend left, I plotted to subdue him in that forest myself, but who should I run into but one of our past victims? Instead of taking the evidence back myself as I had planned, I made it so he would take the fall for me and redirect Wright's suspicion even if all the evidence was out. And it was just more serendipity you and the child acted as corroborating witnesses on the scene to Cruz's attack at Twilight, when I was just planning on the pink one to catch him. I told him I'd have his sibling pulled from the hospital if he didn't cooperate. 
Just wait a second here. How was he able to phone me? I don't know what you mean by that. I tried to send you a telepathic message. It's in that spell book you found, page 162. I was hoping due to your ignorance of Equestria, you wouldn't question it. I did feel something intercepted the signal, though. But somehow, I was still able to talk to you. That was... you? But the voice... It's not hard to alter your voice when speaking through magic. You don't use your vocal cords for telepathy. I just studied the way cruise control enunciated and contacted you using that voice to articulate myself. Think of it as being able to project a piano melody you once heard vividly in your mind, but not actually knowing how to play the piano. She must have used that talent of hers to get down his voice so perfectly. There's no way out of this now. I'm caught. And I guess it's time to pay my dues. Well, this seems to prove the innocence of the defendant. Uh, Miss Trixie, do you have anything to say regarding this confession? Miss Sonata, your plea, whether your actions were in self-defense or not, will be reviewed by Equestria's Council and Supreme Court. You also face several other allegations regarding these blackmailings and tampering with the crime scene. I'm really sorry to say, but taking in account those crimes won't help their decision in your favor. I understand. But as of right now, I can retract my earlier verdict and hand down a proper one in the case of Miss Dash. You did it! You won! Yeah. What's the matter? You know as well as I do that it's not over. You're worried, aren't you? Seek out the truth, and everything will work out fine. You'll see. No, I can't let this happen. I hereby retract my earlier verdict. The defendant, Rainbow Dash, is found to be acquitted of- OBJECTION! <sighs> can't I just hand down my verdict in peace? Wait, Mr. Wright? No, Your Honor. It's not over yet. There was a contradiction in the confession the witness gave. What? The defense believes that Sonata did not murder a Swift. I just admitted it! What are you doing? You are about to win! Your Honor, may I please request Sonata convert that confession she just made to testimony? This is highly unorthodox for a defense attorney to hold the verdict in their favor. But if Miss Sonata is willing to, I can allow it. I really don't understand what he's trying to pull here. But if it makes him happy, I'll do it. Mr. Wright, I must warn you. If you believe there is a contradiction in this witness's testimony and manage to prove she's lying, your client will be seen as guilty once again and will be treated as such immediately afterwards. This will be the final testimony I will grant. With a confession like this from the perpetrator, I see no more reason to prolong this trial. The defense understands your honor. Phoenix, what are you doing? Please trust me. Everything's gonna be alright. Alright. I trust you. What? What? Why are you? All right, Miss Sonata, you've heard Mr. Wright. Please convert your confession to testimony. 
Fine. Have it your way, then. Ace and I have been blackmailing several athletes for some time. I finally had enough of it. I was going to quit as his manager after he had won the Equestrian 500. After Rainbow Dash refused our blackmailing attempt, Ace was angered. It didn't help he saw my letter after we were done quelling the fire in which he ripped in half afterward. He became furious and violent. I saw no choice but to retaliate with a burned golf club that was lying on the ground to defend myself. I hit him so hard it snapped. I dropped the broken pieces and resorted to offensive magic that was enough to shock him and render him through the ground. I retreated to the dark forest, running as fast as I could. I realized he wasn't chasing me, and returned to the clearing after a good ten minutes. I saw the silhouette of his body lying there, lifeless. Coming to terms with what I had done, I gathered the broken golf club at all costs so I wouldn't be caught. I headed back into the forest, and once I was calm, I prepared a teleportation spell back to my hotel room. And you know that. That's my confession. Satisfied? Uh, well, uh, are you, Mr. Wright? I still would like to cross-examine the witness if it's okay. I wouldn't be letting her testify if I wasn't going to let you cross-examine her, so by all means, begin, Mr. Wright. Well, this really shouldn't worry you, Wright, but the slightest instance of you being wrong about this... I will declare Rainbow Dash's innocence, and Miss Sonata will be taken away for further questioning. What you should be worried about is, if you're actually right about there being a hole in this confession. Understood, Your Honor. Are you just doing this to rub salt in my wounds? All right. Time, Time to show Sonata the power of the truth. What it means to be a defense attorney. What she taught me. Ace and I have been blackmailing several athletes for some time. I finally had enough of it. I was going to quit as his manager after he had won the Equestrian 500. Hold it! He's never won any competition fairly? Yes, he has. We didn't blackmail the Stiffs as he had the ability to beat them. And you didn't want to do it anymore? As it said on my resignation letter, I was enjoying the fortune and fame we got. But then... I realized what we were doing. Then why did you get Mr. Cruise Control to attack me? I simply panicked after you scrutinized my room. I knew you started suspecting me, and I did that to get you off my tail. Oh. Is that what this is all about? Very well. Your Honor? Yes? I refuse to press any charges against Phoenix Wright and Pinkie Pie for entering my hotel room. Okay. There. Happy? Now, right? It's my turn for a question. Huh? What are you doing? You're jeopardizing your client's innocent murder, when a while ago you were at my neck accusing me. And despite my efforts, you caught me. But now you're saying I'm innocent? I don't understand you. Do you think I'm lying? Why would I lie confessing my guilt? I suppose if I was trying to protect someone, trust me, that's not the case. Because the sad truth is, I don't have anyone to protect. Then let me protect you. <laughs> I don't understand you. After Rainbow Dash refused our blackmailing attempt, Ace was angered. It didn't help he saw my letter after we were done quelling the fire in which he ripped in half afterward. He became furious and violent. I saw no choice but to retaliate with a burned golf club that was lying on the ground to defend myself. I hit him so hard it snapped. Hold it! How hard did you strike him with the golf club? Hard enough to leave that scar on the back of his head. The stick was hot from lying in the fire. And what about the offensive magic you used on him? How strong was that? 
I really can't explain that. Try me. Well, you aren't educated in magic, but let me try to simplify it for you. What I did was a magic surge. Twilight? A magic surge is pretty much magic's equivalent of adrenaline. Put any pony in the right situation, and the magic they produce will be very powerful. With enough stress, they can produce magic to rival even the princess. So it's like a mother summoning the strength to lift a ton to save her child. Therefore, I can't tell you how strong it was, as I had no control over it. All I know is it was enough to hurdle him a few feet. Did you see exactly where he landed? No, it was too dark. All I could make out were shadows and silhouettes. Even with eyes like mine, I can't really tell you where he landed. What about the location in which you assaulted him? Do you know where that was? I do know we were directly under the cloud. The argument began as we were putting out the fire, the lightning bolt spawned. From what I gather, he must have landed in the dirt, and Gilda moved him back underneath the cloud shortly after while I was gone. I dropped the broken pieces and resorted to offensive magic that was enough to shock him and render him to the ground. I retreated to the dark forest, running as fast as I could. I realized he wasn't chasing me, and returned to the clearing after a good ten minutes. I saw the silhouette of his body lying there, lifeless. Coming to terms of what I had done, I gathered the broken golf club at all costs so I wouldn't be caught. OBJECTION! I was right from the beginning. This all makes sense now. Sonata, what you said is impossible. How is it impossible? Why do you care if it's impossible? Mr. Wright, I have told you nothing but the truth. And I agree with you, Sonata. You're not lying. But those unique eyes of yours seem to have failed you this time. I'm mistaken? Mr. Wright, where are you going with this? I, I agree. Explain. Sonata claims she used a spell to electrocute him to protect herself. Yes, that's true. But then you said something that struck me as odd, Sonata. You said the golf club's end snapped off when you assaulted him. And that's that piece you found. What's odd about this? It's odd because the handle and the metal piece were in two different locations. The metal piece under the cloud, and the handle in the dirt. This was all a waste of time. It's easy to see what happened here. After she hit him with a golf club, the end ricocheted off his neck into the dirt after it snapped. Uh, yes, uh, even I can see that's what happened. Uh, and that's saying a lot. No, Your Honor. That's not what happened. Let's recall how Sonata stated how the events took place. I dropped the broken pieces and resorted to offensive magic that was enough to shock him and render him to the ground. Sonata stated she dropped the pieces after she struck him. Sonata, is this true? It, yes, I did. I was still holding onto the pieces after they snapped. I dropped them in place. But you said another thing, Sonata. I saw the silhouette of his body lying there, lifeless. Coming to terms of what I had done, I gathered the broken golf club at all costs so I wouldn't be caught. Sonata, why didn't you gather the broken end of the club if you were trying not to get caught? I couldn't find it. I couldn't even focus an illumination spell with all that had befallen, so I searched around in the dark for a few minutes, but I only found the handle. And you just searched the area you found the handle in, because you knew you had dropped both pieces in the exact same spot. Yes. <gasps> but then... How did the two pieces end up so far away from each other? The handle was right in this location according to Gilda's testimony, and the imprint it left. But the end was next to Ace's body under the cloud. Exactly. We can probably all agree the metal piece was found exactly where Sonata hit Ace with the golf club. But how would you know something like that? What if it was the end piece that was actually me? Very simple. The golf club was lost while it was still whole, and it was still whole until Sonata used it as a weapon, 
the imprint was made afterward, and the end wasn't intact. If she had really dropped it in place there, the end piece should have been right next to it. Then who moved the handle? But, but this, this doesn't make any sense. No one was at the crime scene between when she hit him and... Unless that griffin... Gilda didn't move it. She would sooner admit she moved the body. Up until now, we didn't even know this golf club was used to hit him. And Gilda dismissed it as a piece of garbage. Rainbow Trash must have gone back and moved it then. She couldn't have either. Rainbow Dash wouldn't have had enough time to go back and be spotted by Fluttershy anyway. According to her, it's a good 15 minutes for that clearing. But, I know who moved it. This is absurd! You just ruled out everyone, Mr. Wrong. Uh, Miss Trixie is right. Mr. Wrong, uh, Mr. Right. Uh, you just disproved everyone. Who could have possibly moved it? I'll tell you who. The answer is, the victim himself, Ace moved the golf club. What? Oh. Hello? What are you thinking? How could he have moved it? He was dead. Mr. Wright, have you lost your mind? It's the truth, Your Honor. I believe Sonata did perform this spell and electrocuted him. But I think it was only enough to render him unconscious for a few minutes. But he was dead when I got back. He wasn't breathing, I'm sure of it. You're correct, Sonata. He was dead when you got back. So he must have died in between when you ran away and returned to the crime scene. This is ridiculous. How did he die if the lightning bolt or being hit with that spell didn't do it? It was the second lightning bolt. No, no, no! We've been through this a million times. It didn't strike at all. Three of our witnesses didn't hear it because it was a dud bolt. Make it four because I didn't hear it either. I don't believe it was a dud bolt. From my understanding, lightning here in Equestria makes sound based on vibrations of the impact of what it hit. After he woke up, he must have been fumed after Sonata's assault on him, and quitting as his manager. He probably took to the air to pay Sonata back in space. Therefore, if we take into account that the bolt struck him in midair, it wouldn't have made a sound. Did you forget about his suit? From my understanding, a Pegasus is completely impervious to lightning while wearing that suit in midair. The exposed parts are completely covered while flying, and it still would have pierced his body and left a burn mark on the ground, making a sound in case you want to suggest he wasn't wearing it. What about the wings? Uh, they're clearly exposed. What if the bolt hit one of those? Due to the anatomy of Pegasi wings being so fragile compared to the rest of their body, a lightning bolt would have taken his wing clean off. And yet, both his wings are still intact with no damaging whatsoever. Cruise Control took a picture of him wearing the suit as he was entering the forest. He was indeed wearing it from that point till his demise. I don't understand. There's no way he could have been electrocuted by a stray bolt then. She's right, Wrong. We're back where we started yesterday. You can't say a random bolt hit him in midair not making a sound without concrete proof. But this time I have concrete proof. Now that I know one other factor of the events. The golf club. Or handle, should I say. Now we know he's the one who could have moved it, right? Mr. Wright. Angered by being struck and burned by it, he picked it up and took to the air to get a better view of the dark forest. Now where would a Pegasus hold a stick while he's in the air? Probably in his mouth. But that's the only place he could hold it while flying, I think. Right, Your Honor. In his mouth. Mr. Wright. Who's that? At 8.50, the, the lightning bolt struck. The, the metal, metal handle acted as a makeshift lightning rod in his mouth, pumping all that electricity directly into his body. It didn't need any accuracy to hit him, and made no sound since he was hit in midair. This would seem to explain a few things. Do uh, you have any retort to this possibility, Miss Trixie? No. I don't. 
I can't beat that. The prosecution rests. Mr. Wright, I, I don't know what to say. Never in my life has anyone ever done something like this for me. I can't believe I was so wrong. So very wrong. You weren't wrong. That note was proof that you wanted to do the right thing in the end. Not about that. I overlooked such a minuscule detail and thought I had done it. It's ironic I tried to convince myself I hadn't done it when I really didn't do it. If only I wasn't so afraid of being a murderer, I may not have needed to put you all through this trouble to get the ultimate truth of this event. Miss Sonata, though you may not have murdered A. Swift, you face some serious allegations including tampering with the crime scene and these numerous blackmailing accounts I have been informed of, and you will still be punished accordingly. It's all right. I have done some terrible things, and though I regret them, I humbly accept my punishment. I also owe you an apology, Trixie. You really did better than I could have done. I think the only pathetic fake here is me. I intend on changing that. I wanted to quit all this extortion. I just wanted to be left in solitude. The guilt I felt was excruciating. But you've given me the second chance, Mr. Wright. You stayed determined and true to what you believed in when everyone, including myself, thought otherwise. From now on, I'll try to give that same prospect to those who need it. For that... Thank you, Phoenix. You're welcome, Sonata. What a very peculiar turn of events. The victim ended up being responsible for his own death. There was no murder at all. But perhaps all that karma finally nipped him in the back very hard. Hmm. It would seem I could give a proper verdict now. In the case of Miss Rainbow Dash, I find the defendant... OBJECTION! is fun to say. Now I understand why you attorneys enjoy cutting off my verdict. The tension, the suspense, the draw! Just give me the verdict! Uh oh. Okay, you didn't need to shout at me. Court is now adjourned. Rainbow Dash, but Sonata as well. Rainbow Dash, I came as fast as I could. Scootaloo, what are you doing here? I tried getting in that detention center, but those armored thugs wouldn't let me through. And you have no idea how much I wanted to come to the trial yesterday, but I was stuck in school. Can you believe it? This was an emergency. But today's a school day, too. You're right, but then I remembered Apple Bloom got the day off to come down here. That's because she was testifying as a witness. Don't tell me you just took the day off without any permission. Okay, I won't tell you that. Y you're deliberately cutting your classes? What is wrong with this generation? The reason I came down here was to help. Detective Scootaloo has come to crack the case of the Cutie Mark Crusader Private Investigator. <sighs> Not another one. You're that lawyer T. Apple Bloom is talking about, right? Look at all this wicked evidence I found! Here! A bottle cap? A peanut? And a pine cone? I'm glad you came down to help, kid, but everything's fine now. Don't encourage her, she's skipping school! Oh yeah, uh, that's bad, and stuff, and you... 
Uh, I shouldn't do that. Anything to help you, Rainbow Dash? <sighs> well, back on the subject of Sonata, do you have any idea what's going to happen to her? She's still going to be punished for tampering with the crime scene and blackmailing all those racers. But that's just a slap on the wrist compared to the punishment of murder. Is the same thing going to happen to Gilda? Yeah, she moved the body. But like I said, it's only a slap on the wrist. They won't be in there for too long. Yes, I don't mind. It could have been worse. Much worse. Sonata, weren't you being brought into custody? I asked if I could speak with you one more time and the guards accommodated my request. What did you want to talk to me about? You were right. I have done some despicable things. I I'm sorry, I didn't mean to say that. You don't need to feel bad for me. I owe you an apology. And to you, Rainbow Dash. I not only took part in the blackmail you were a victim of, but tried framing you for murder. I understand if you don't want to forgive me. After what you put me through? Of course I don't, you no good conniving- R Rainbow! <laughs> it's okay if she doesn't want to forgive me, Phoenix. Honestly, I'm having a hard time doing that as well. <sighs> Another griffin! I hope this one doesn't want to rip me to shreds. Lenora! <laughs> Hello, Twilight Sparkler. <sighs> Good job winning the trial. It wasn't me. It was him. Oh, you're a human. Don't see many of those in Equestria. I've seen a few while making deliveries, but the ones I've seen certainly don't look like you. You don't want to tear me into smithereens, do you? Uh, what? Never mind him. Why are you here? We would have come sooner, but we heard that she was called to the stand regarding the blackmailings not too long ago. Frankly, I wanted to see you take her down, Twilight Sparkler. I even brought him with me. Ah! Isn't he supposed to be in detention? His lawyer scored him a low bail. We were going to pony up and testify for you and tell what her and Ace were doing, despite what she has against us. This is the guy who attacked me? I know sorry may not be enough, but I truly am. What I did to you, to everyone, to be fair, she was intending to stop it before Ace's death. In fact, her quitting put her in some serious danger. Newsflash! She did it again when she got him to attack you! And that was after Ace bit the dust! Let me make it up to you now. Cruz, your sister is in that hospital, right? Yes? After Ace died, all his money went to me. I'm going to donate every last bit of it to medical research regarding your sister's case. I'll see to it that she stays in there until she awakens. You'll do that? Twilight, since... I'm going to be in solitary confinement for a while. Can you manage my money for me and make sure it goes toward that cause? Since you're a former citizen of Canterlot, they shouldn't give you too much trouble when taking the money upon my request. Yes, I can do that, but... How did you know I used to live there? I've never met you before. I just noticed the slightly smug way you carry yourself. A lot of Canterlot citizens adopt that saunter. Wow, it's amazing how you can- Wait, smug? If you can do that, thank you. Ah, whatever. I still don't like her for what she did. The very least I can do is say I'm sorry. I've learned my lesson. Well, I guess I can forgive you. Kinda, sorta. Kinda, sorta? Yeah, you know. Kinda and sorta. How about makes no and sense? Hey, you must be that newbie. Congratulations on getting an innocent verdict. Thank you. I've heard a lot of good things about you. I look forward to going head-to-head -head with you when the race rolls around. <laughs> You'll see I'm no slouch, I promise. Yeah! Rainbow Dash is totally gonna win the whole thing! No contest! That's good to hear. Well, we best be going now. We're going to squeeze in a few more hours of practice. 
we wish you all the best of luck. Yeah, even you. Hey, maybe I'll actually watch the race this year. That's awesome! Finally, someone showing some patriotism and taking the Equestrian 500 seriously. More power to you, Twilight Sparkler. It's Sparkle. Sparkle! Sparkle! Not Sparkler! No need to explode. He could have just told me in a calmer tone and I would have gotten it. But, but... Can you do us a favor and take this one to the schoolhouse? Aw, but I wanted to stay here and celebrate with all of you! Sure. I want to stay far away from Krabby McPurple Pony until she decides to chill out. But I'm not... <laughs> uh, we'll see you all later. You can fly, right? Me? No, I can't yet. But you just watch, pal. One day, I'm gonna be just as awesome of a flyer as Rainbow Dash! You look up to her a lot, don't you? Well, duh! She's like the bestest, fastest, coolest pony ever! We're like birds of a feather! You know, you remind me a lot of... Oh, never mind. We better get you to school. Tell you what, we'll give you a lift, free of charge! Goodbye, every pony! Sparkle, sparkle, sparkle. She didn't have to yell at me. It's not my fault pony name for hard to pronounce. How in the hoof is Twilight Sparkle hard to pronounce? That went over a little better than I expected. Phoenix, can you please do one more thing for me? What's that? It's about that Pinkie Pie. Pinkie Pie? What about her? Tell her. I was trying my hardest not to laugh. Uh, <laughs> will do. Nix, seriously, I can't thank you enough for what you did for me. I owe you one. Really? Because I don't think I'm the one you should be thanking. Huh? What do you mean? There's someone who deserves your gratitude even more. Oh, right! Thanks for hiring such a cool lawyer, Twilight! Well, it's nice that you're thanking Twilight. But that's not who I had in mind. You got acquitted because of this someone. The judge? No. Scootaloo? Ugh, no! Someone who the trial would have ended differently without. Uh... <laughs> Can you refresh my memory? I forget things easy. Do I really have to spell this out for you? The trial would have been lost without... Take that! Fluttershy? But she helped Trixie by testifying against me! She did do that. But don't you remember what she did today? You had been given the guilty verdict. I had nothing left. Then she got on the stand and made the trial continue despite the verdict. And that certainly isn't an easy feat. I haven't known her for as long as you have, but I could tell she was really trying her absolute hardest for you when she got up there. Things would have ended a lot differently if she had not intervened. And I think that's more than you deserve from her after what you said this morning. Uh, oh. Here she comes now. Hello, every pony. You did great in there. It was very, uh, flutter bold of you. It was no problem, Mr. Phoenix. Your timing could have been a little better, though. Oh, I'm sorry my timing wasn't good. <laughs> it's alright. We still won, didn't we? Yes. Congratulations, Rainbow Dash. Rainbow Dash, don't you have something to say? Ugh. I'm... I'm sorry, Fluttershy. Thank you. Oh, it's okay. No, oh, it's not! Don't pretend this morning didn't happen! You can't say every 
everything's okay. I treated you like dirt. I said so many awful things to you. I said I hated you. And even then, you still came back and helped me. Why would you do that? Because you're my friend, Rainbow Dash. To tell the truth, I was so scared to get back on that stand with all those eyes looking down on me. And after what happened last time, I really didn't want to just make things worse like I did yesterday. Then why did you do it? Because I thought to myself, what would she do? She? The strongest and bravest pony that I know. She would stand her ground and be strong. So I did my best to be just like her and got back up on that stand again. Because right then, after I heard the guilty verdict, I realized that very same pony needed my help. So I knew I had to try my hardest to be as brave as I could. Because that's what she'd do for me. I'm so sorry, Fluttershy! <laughs> Yes? Can you proofread this for me? I usually get Spike to do it. Sure. Dear Princess Celestia, I learned something from the most unlikely pony, Trixie. I thought about something she said today, and I think she's right. Friendship is unnecessary, like art, poetry, and music. We don't need it to survive like food and water. Rather, it's one of those things that gives our life, and other lives, value and meaning giving us a reason to push forward. It allows us to achieve feats of strength and valor we thought we never had in us to protect the ones we care about. And by uniting, even the biggest of problems can be overcome. But then that's where Trixie was wrong. Ironically, that word she mocked ended up saving the day. That's the magic of friendship. It should never be underestimated. And I could see right now that tears will clear the way for a deep and lasting one. Your faithful student, Twilight Sparkle. It's perfect. I'm glad those two got things patched up. Yeah, me too. Uh-oh. Yeah. There she goes. She's coming back. Gone again. And coming back again. Ow! Phoenix, this may be a bit selfish, but can you do me a favor? What? Can you please go talk to Trixie? Why do you want me to talk to her? It's that issue I wanted to bring up with you. She bears awful feeling towards me for some reason. She won't listen to me, but she may speak with you. You're not the one who just had a hat thrown at you. Besides, I just foiled her revenge scheme. Do you think she really wants to talk to me right now? Let alone see me? Please, Phoenix. There was another pony in Equestria who was consumed by feelings similar to hers, and the result wasn't pretty. <sighs> okay, I'll try. But I'm out of there. She starts tossing more stuff at me. Thank you, Phoenix. Before I try, what does this have to do with the Megatama? Just ask her, what do you have against Twilight Sparkle and her friends, and you'll see for yourself. She'll probably respond with the Ursa Minor, but I know that's not the case. All right. Wish me luck. I'm gonna need a lot of it. She's blue and wearing a purple cape. Have you seen her anywhere? 
I... <laughs> Did any pony ever tell you you have nice, beautiful hands? Uh, no. <laughs> Thanks, anyway. I'll just be going now. Hey! Watch it, pal! Uh, I I'm sorry. You best be sorry. You look like I'm in a good mood today. Otherwise, I would have beat you so hard and make you feel like a sluice in the express. It, it won't happen again. It better not. Now, out of my way! What was her problem? Wait. That couldn't have been... You ruined everything. I, uh, wanted to give back your hat. You dropped it. Or, uh, whipped it at my face. Give that back, you rotten thief! That's mine! This isn't going so well. So, why did you come out here? Come to chastise me? Put me in my place? No, of course not. I just wanted to talk to you, that's all. Well, I don't want to talk to you! I'm not in the mood! Trixie, take this however you want. But you did a good job in there. You did a really good job. I thought you had me several times the past two days. Don't patronize me. I lost. But it's not about winning or losing when you're an attorney. It's about the truth. And I think you realize that, too. I remember you siding with me when Gilda was giving her false testimonies. And that move you made against Sonata regarding that teleportation had no benefits for you as a prosecutor. I don't care about any stupid truth. Do you remember how that Griffin felt bad about revenge? It certainly didn't for me. As soon as I heard that guilty verdict, I felt like I was on top of the world. I suppose that makes me bad. But whatever. It's not like it even matters anymore. But what I'm trying to say is, it's up to the defense and the prosecution to push each other to their limits. And you certainly delivered. It could have done without the insults. But you did well keeping me in check. That isn't a hard thing to do, since you are such a blithering moron. I really can't get through to her. I'm quitting this whole prosecutor thing anyway. It was just another occupation my parents put me in while growing up in Canterlot. I never even cared about it up until this point. The only thing driving me to excel at it was to get some redemption. But it's not like I have much to go back to. My other routine is in just as bad shape. Why's that? Why do you think? That lavender loser ruined it all. My stage is busted up and falling apart and I don't have the money to fix it. Wherever I go, my shows bomb. I've made it regular practice to dodge tomatoes. Maybe it's just because you're so ostentatious. <clears throat> I mean, uh, uh, yeah, that sounds terrible. It's not fair. It's like a cruel joke. Life gives you something you think you're gifted at, and then some little goody four-horseshoes know-it-all comes along and ruins all the success in a heartbeat. I hate her so much! Why does she have to be more talented than me in every little aspect? Why is it when I try to entertain with magic, I get an angry mob, but when she does the simplest, stupidest magic trick at her own leisure, she gets... <laughs> Ugh. Why am I telling you this? I don't want to talk to you. Buzz off. You know, when I was a kid, I was really into magic. I wanted to be a magician myself. I wanted one of those fancy silk hats. But my parents never got me one. They were too expensive. What's this have to do with anything? I don't know. I just wanted to try to talk to you on some sort of common ground. I thought it was traditional for a magician to wear a silk hat. Do you honestly think I care about your pathetic life? Sorry, but I'm a little busy dealing with mine. So for the last time, leave me alone. <sighs> I know I'm probably going to regret this. You know, I'm curious. I've seen Trixie the Prosecutor. But I haven't seen the great and powerful Trixie the Magician. Can I see your magic show, Trixie? Ha! That's a good one. Why would I want you to see my show? You owe me a voucher. What? 
Yesterday, you said you'd give me a voucher for one of your performances after I accused Fluttershy. Twilight doesn't seem to be sending me back home anytime soon, so I'll watch your show in the meantime. I was being sarcastic, you moron. Fine, I won't watch it then. N no, please! <coughs> I mean, I'm... I'm just not used to getting requests to perform, that's all. I'll let you see it. If you really want to, that is. Okay, I'd love to. And don't get me wrong, Mr. Dead Wrong. I still hate you with an unbelievable passion. But if you want to see it, I can't deny my fans a performance, no matter who they may be. You don't need a voucher anyway. It's free. Always has been. So a greedy, cheapskate, money-grubbing lawyer such as yourself doesn't need to worry about that. Why do you do it for free? Don't most magicians and performers charge entry fees to their shows? And couldn't you fix that stage of yours if you charged admission? Because it's none of your business, that's why. I was only asking. Pinky! Hello, Pinkie Pie. I'm on my way to Rainbow Dash's trial. Pinky, you missed it again. Uh, not again. Is Rainbow Dash okay again? I think, I think Pinkie, Pinkie Pie would find a way to be late for her own funeral. Yeah, everything's fine now. She's off the hook. Stellar work, Feeny, my boy! My boy? I'm clearly older than you. You know what this calls for? What? Two words! A party! A party? Twenty-one words! Yeah, a party! You should come celebrate too because I love having parties to all my friends after something good happens! After something good happens. Uh, how did you... Uh, yeah. It would seem this would be the occasion to throw one. What about you? Do you want to come? Huh? Me? Yeah, you! You want to invite me to a party? Like they say, the more the merrier. And you're all grumpy all the time, so I figured a party would turn that frown upside down. Maybe you could put on your show there. You'll have a larger crowd that way. Uh, as if, why would the great and powerful Trixie want to go to some juvenile party with Mr. Wrong and a sad bunch of loser ponies? But Trixie lost the trial, didn't she? She deserves a punishment. And that will be to endure your childish party that Trixie doesn't want to go to. At all. Trixie will show Twilight Snarkle, Rainbow Trash, Haggity and Apple Junk, feats of magic the likes of which they've never seen. You shouldn't make fun of others' names. Oh, and why not? Because they might be like mine and be... <laughs> copyrighted. That wasn't funny. <sighs> and you are? Those insult names are some of the worst things I've ever heard, and I don't mean they're offensive. Excuse me for trying to lighten up the mood. You're saying Trixie isn't funny? <laughs> Trixie will show you, Mr. Wrong. Get ready. Trixie is about to display the funniest joke in her arsenal. Be warned, many have been known to die of laughter from this one. Give me. Here goes. Why do they call me the great and powerful Trixie? Because I'm always playing tricks. See, you're no better at... Trixie tell you. Trixie's humor is only rivaled by that of her show-stopping magical powers. Your jokes are about as funny as a root canal. But it's basically the exact same kind of punchline as mine! I'll go tell the rest about the party! Hey, did he hurt you bad? Huh? That buffoon that attacked you in the forest. Oh, no. It's just a small bump. Nothing serious. Good. Trixie was going to send in a search in to find you after we booked him. But Snarkle ended up finding you first. 
I didn't know you cared. I don't, but I don't want you dead either. Despite what that nerd and her fan club may have told you, I'm not a monster. What are you looking at me like that for? What's that you're holding? Oh, it's just a pine cone. Some kid dumped it on me as evidence. Cute, huh? Uh, yeah. Cute. Can I... Forget it. Take Trixie to this stupid party, wrong. Oh, uh, uh right. Oh, wait! A Magatama. One more thing, Trixie. What? I wanted to ask you something. How did you manage to get her to come here? Well, Pinkie Pie did, not me. Still, her show is a bit more tolerable than it was last time. It may be because I'm still new here, but I thought the magic she did was amazing. I'm not talking about the magic. I mean the name-calling and boasting. She was a little more tolerable than the last time she was in Ponyville. I think she may be on the road to a better lifestyle. What are you talking about, Twilight? A conceited, ill mannered unsavory degenerate called me Haggerty! I'm not a hag! And did you hear what she said to me? She told me to lend myself out as a rodeo clown. Better lifestyle, my hoof. Baby steps, girls. Baby steps. By the way, did you ask Trixie the question yet? Yeah, I did. So you saw them? I didn't see anything. I asked the question you told me to ask her, but nothing happened. Nothing? Well, uh... Something happened. Mm -hmm. Um... What's with the pause? You want a cookie or something, you spiky-headed twit? It's that dumb star-spangled flea-bag bear, and it always has been. That purple pest put you up to this, didn't she? Tell Dork Light and her dumb bangs to stop pestering Trixie with that question when she knows the answer to it. N never mind. N nothing happened. But... I could have sworn. Hello. Whoa! This is the first thing in Equestria that meets me on eye level. Princess! Uh, Princess? Phoenix, bow! It's alright, Twilight. There's no need for him to bow. So this is her. I want an explanation now. H hey You! Yes? Twilight told me you told her to bring me here because you knew me. Then you told her to deceive me. Oh, she did now. I'm sorry, but I had to tell him. I understand. I really appreciate what you have done for my subjects, Phoenix. It's really an honor meeting you. But Princess, you said you knew him. I've never seen you in my life! And you couldn't have watched any of my trials! You're not exactly inconspicuous. Why I'm here, though, is to deliver your payment. I'd rather deliver it personally, as something seems to be wrong with the mail in Ponyville. I sent out a letter a few days ago, and only yesterday did the recipient get it. I wonder what happened. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I wonder. Wait, you're paying me? Of course. You didn't expect to be rewarded for your efforts? It's just I'm not used to being paid real money for my work. Most of my clients pay me with an IOU. Well, here is a symbol of mine and every pony's gratitude. I thank you again. I don't think a defense attorney in Equestria would have been able to do what you did. You see, Equestria has been in quite the peaceful state for centuries outside of a few minor crimes, and it turns out it is still as you proved the crime was nothing more than a mere accident. Then what's with the royal escort? I mean, if it's so peaceful and all. 
Even though it's peaceful, there are still entities who try to disrupt the peace. That's what the guards are for. But most of the time, these guards are around for ceremonial reasons. <laughs> In fact, these past few days are probably going to be the most excitement they will have for a long time. I see. Oh, right. Phoenix? Yeah? Please give Maya, Pearl, and Edgeworth my regards. It's a shame I couldn't meet them as well. But... but how... Goodbye, Phoenix. Or you prefer Nick, don't you? How do you know all this about me? Well, I must be off now. Twilight, did you see that? See what? There were psyche locks all over your princess. There were? I must have worn off then. Worn off? The most likely reason I was affected by that thing's power was me mixing otherworldly magic with my own magic. It was because I picked it up using levitation. I looked up on how to cure it, and it said it would eventually wear off in a day or two. It's a shame. I really wanted to use it on some other subjects. You use it on other subjects? <laughs> I mean, it's good that it wore off. It was starting to freak me out seeing all those locks all over the place. <laughs> but why did it react to your princess? I don't know. I still want to know how she knew all that stuff about me. You shouldn't worry about it. She must have had a good reason for not telling you. Well, if you say... Whoa! Nyx, you're rich! Huh? The princess gave you a huge haul! There has to be at least 50,000... No! 70,000 in here! 70,000?! Congratulations, Phoenix! You really earned it! <laughs> you flatter me. I don't think I deserve all this money. But I'll gladly accept it. Sports, Sports car, here I come, baby! Um, what are these? Why, they're bits, darling. Bits? It's our currency. Would there be any way I could get this converted to USD? USD? Bits are the universal currency used all across Equestria. No! All this might as well be play money! Look, he's so happy, he's crying! What's the matter? I can't use this money in my world. Oh, well, that's too bad. You know, you could give it to one of us. I'm sure one of us could put it to good use. Oh, oh, you should totally give it to your faithful client who never doubted you for a second. Every lawyer must suck horse apples if you're supposed to be the best one. Uh, oh, did I say that? It was, uh, just a joke! Yeah! Like that hilarious joke you told me yesterday! <laughs> you're always right because your name is right, but you mean right as in being correct! And, uh... <laughs> really now, I'm sure M, Mr. Right M, will give that M generous M, sum of riches to some pony who M, generously M, fixed his suit M. Really subtle, Rarity. Hey, I know. Remember how I didn't knock you upside the head? Well, can't blame a gal for trying. Actually, I've decided who I want to give it to. Oh yeah, baby! Hey, Trixie. What do you want? I want you to have it. Uh, you're giving that money to... me? What?! Don't tell me you're serious! Why are you giving it to her?! How with Rainbow on this one? She hasn't done one good thing to deserve that money. And she called me Haggerty! Maybe so. But she's the only one, besides me, walking out of this experience empty-handed. Er, hooved. That doesn't mean you should give it to her! Look at all she's done! She almost got Rainbow Dash banished! Yeah! 
I remember a moment today Sonata backed me into a corner regarding teleporting, until Trixie interjected. I'm a strong believer everything isn't in black and white. Especially after this case. Sometimes good people make mistakes, and do things they may come to deeply regret later. On the other hand, people we perceived as bad, like Sonata, may not be as bad as we thought they were, once we get their side of the story. Whether Trixie did that to help me or not, it really did help us see the victory we got in the end, and I really do think that there's some good in her after she did something like that. It's probably just hard for her to show it when she feels the world's against her for a mistake she made. You said you needed money to fix your stage, right? And this should be more than enough. We forgive you, Trixie. I know life has been really tough on you. Take the money as a symbol of our friendship. Even if you've made some mistakes in the past, we'll be there for you if you're ever in trouble. I sure as heck won't. Rainbow! Phoenix. Twilight. I... I... Think you're the biggest loser, idiot, moron, dummy, numbskulls in the world! <laughs> Honestly, did you think the great and powerful Trixie would be touched by your namby-pamby sentiments? Thank you all so much. It feels good to have friends. All said while well, Trixie sheds a single tear. Is that what you were expecting, huh? Y yeah that's sort of what I was hoping for. Keep dreaming, Snarkle. You're in need of a return ticket flight to reality from that sugar-coated world you live in. Ooh, ooh, ooh! I like sugar! I couldn't imagine if the world was coated in it! Would it taste delicious? Actually, I don't know if that's a good idea! I have to try really hard to keep myself from eating Sugar Cube Corner because it looks like it's made of candy and treats and stuff, but it's really not! Trust me, I tried! Turns out it's just gross metal and concrete and wood and- Pinky! <laughs> Sorry! Trixie will take this money you so foolishly donated to her. See? What did we tell you? She never learns! Simmer down, Rainbow Trash. Trixie is counting her bits. Call me Rainbow Trash one more time, I dare you! We're not in court anymore. Nothing is stopping me from turning you red, black, and blue! Actually, you only turn her black and red, Rainbow Dash. She's already blue. Oh, you don't like the name Trixie has graciously bestowed upon you? How about Lamebow Dash? That really was a good one. Hey, let's merge the two. Lamebow Trash. It's perfect, just like Trixie. <laughs> Okay, that's it! Just calm down, Rainbow. I suppose it's just her way of saying thank you. An obnoxious, stuck-up way of saying it, if you ask me. Whatever. I still can't believe you gave all that to her. A waste. I'm sure deep down in her heart, she really is thankful. Even if she doesn't show it. I was really hoping she'd show some sliver of gratitude after that. Guess you can't win them all. Hey! Let's take a picture to commemorate! Who has a camera? I do. But I used the last of the film during the investigation. None of you have one? I have one. But it's all the way back at home. I can go get it if you want. I'm sure we can wait. You can just use the one the investigation team gave Trixie. Oh, thank you. That's very kind of you. I just... just take the super camera. O okay. All right, every pony. Say cheese! Say cheese? How old are you, Snarkle? Four? Oh, well, I... It is a little... cliché. Saying cheese is a little, well, cheesy. Yeah, Twilight? You did sound kind of lame. Alright, I get it, sheesh! What do you suggest we say then? And Spike, when did you get here? I was here the whole- I know exactly what we should say! It came to mind when I was sewing up Mr. Wright's suit yesterday. Hmm? Oh, that. Ah, I know what you're talking about. I've been totally dying to say this for a while now! I 
got to say it once. It felt great. The great and powerful Trixie doesn't see anything special about it. But if we must. So if I follow y'all correctly, we're gonna yell, Congestion! Right? <laughs> no, AJ. It's... Oh, okay. Gotcha, Twa. This is going to be so fun. I like saying funny words. Get ready. Three, two, one. Objection! I want to make up for what I've done by helping others. And I have you to thank for bringing this change in me for the better. You know, there's something I've been meaning to tell you. I didn't want to say anything before because I thought I was just going crazy, but... During the final chapter of the trial, that last moment we had solved everything, I could have sworn I saw someone next to you. But the strange thing is, it looked like... Out of my way, sister! My turn! You've got some nerve showing up here! You're just lucky this fiberglass window is separating us, otherwise I'd bring your scrawny, swarmy little dick out! The race was called off because of what happened. But guess what? The three of us are gonna hold an unofficial one! It's not fair that you lost your opportunity to go against the big leagues because of all this. And no more holding back this time, right, Cruz? No, not anymore. That heavy burden is long gone now. By the way, I thank you for not pressing any charges against me. After what I did to you, I feel absolutely awful about it. It's not your fault. All three of us were victims of the same thing. Yeah. Besides, I'm sure he forgives you. He's really nice like that. He plays with baby toys in public and everything. Thank you. Please, tell Twilight I wanted to thank her for knocking some sense into me as well. Let's stop the smoking and get this show on the road. Ready? Set? Go! Guess you really showed me. He got Rainbow off the hook and everything. But one thing... Can you tell old Beardy to... Um... What are the words I'm looking for here?
What my sister Applejack here is trying to say is this judge character is prancing about, shoving his love for Equestria in every pony's faces, and that's a tad overbearing for every pony around him. It's okay for you to take pride in what you enjoy, but you shouldn't shove it down every pony's throat. I'm sure you wouldn't like it if we constantly tried to feed you apples, despite the fact you may not like them and prefer oranges. We should try to stay respectful to the fact you may not like apples. Every pony and every one is different, and that's what makes the world so great, sharing opinions and learning more about each other's differences. There really isn't a clear-cut definition of normality, since every individual is so diverse if you think about it that way. Yeah, that's what I was trying to say. Thanks, big brother. <laughs> yep. I'm still grounded. Consider yourself lucky. I got grounded and I have to do lousy community service for skipping school. I mean, what gives? I provided crucial evidence. They should be throwing a parade in my honor. No, I provide crucial evidence while helping Twilight. All you found was a bunch of useless junk. Ugh. Well, if I'd had a whole day off school like some pony, I would have found evidence ten times better than said some pony. Stop it, girls. I believe you have something to do right now, Scootaloo. But mowing old pony Jenkins' lawn is so boring. I guess you should have thought of that before you decide to skip school. Haha. -ha. And Apple Bloom, since you missed a whole day of school the other day, I think it's only fair you help her out with her community service to make up for it. What? Do, do I have to help them, Miss Cheerily? No, Sweetie Belle, you don't. In fact, it sure is a scorcher today, isn't it? We're staying out of trouble. How about we go to Sugar Cube Corner for a bowl of ice cream today? My treat! Yay! Ice cream! Trixie was actually looking for you before you had left, because Trixie is leaving too. Oh no, not to say goodbye or anything. You take all this stupid evidence. Trixie doesn't want it. Keep it all as a souvenir for all Trixie cares. Trixie is leaving Ponyville as well and wishes to purge her mind of this backwater hick town. Nothing but bad memories here. So start by taking out this trash, garbage boy. I see. So, you're leaving already? Hmm, I'm going to stay here a bit longer. I was on vacation anyway. Nobody should miss me. Uh, I want to watch this summer sun celebration I've been hearing about. Oh, and uh, please, may I ask you to keep all that has transpired here secret? You know, just between you and me. I won't tell any pony, uh, anybody if you don't. Thank you for everything, Phoenix. But I guess it's time to say goodbye now. I wish you could stay a bit longer, so we could get to know each other outside of investigating and trials. I've learned a lot, though. Anyone who ends up with you as a lawyer is really lucky. No, anyone who ends up with you as a friend is really lucky. Let's keep it that way. Even if you're away from us, the others and I won't forget you. And I hope you won't forget you have friends over here, either. We'll always be friends in each other's hearts, and that is the most wonderful thing about friendship. It's everlasting, and you're never truly alone. And even if we're a world apart, I think it can transcend... Twilight, stop with the sappy stuff! I think he gets it. I'm just trying to make a meaningful goodbye, Spike. Then just say goodbye already. <sighs> I guess you're right. Well, I guess this is it. Maybe we could see each other again someday. I'd like that. Goodbye, Phoenix Wright.
What an ordeal. Nick! Hey, Maya. Don't hey, Maya, me. Where were you? You weren't seeing other women, were you? <sighs> no, I wasn't seeing other women. Wait, why would that even matter? I'm single. Because your heart belongs to Mystic Maya. She's your special somebody. Pearl? Pearl? Yes, right. I demand an explanation. Edgeworth? What are you doing here? Oh, no, you don't. Don't try to change the subject. You've been missing for almost two days. You wouldn't answer your phone or anything. If you must know, this girl pestered me to the brink to help search for you. He caved in once I told him you might be in trouble. Aw, were you worried about me, Edgeworth? <laughs> now, I didn't. This girl was simply dragging me around town against my will trying to find you. Nothing more. Where were you? Well, let's just say I was out of town. By the way, your slogan for the office. It attracted a lot of business, didn't it? No, just telemarketers. That's because you probably said it like an old man. You need to put some oomph into it, like this. Right in company office, defending you like it's nothing, baby. Old man? I'm still in my 20s. Hmm. <laughs> this is why I work alone. You're changing the subject again. Fess up. Where have you been the last? Huh? What's that in your pocket? Huh? Yoink! Hey! Hey! No! Don't open that! Aha! This must be evidence as to where you really were. This better not be money from your sugar mama, Mr. Nick. No, Maya, you don't understand. Just please don't open that. You're busted, Nick. Let's see what you've really been up to. Uh... Right. So, who wants to watch a movie or something? I'll make the popcorn. Mr. Nick, you're never gonna win Mystic Maya's heart, let alone any woman carrying pictures like these. Is that Rainbow Horse doing what I think it is? Actually, Maya, she's not a horse. She's a pony. Do you have any shame? They aren't mine! I think I'd rather have a bee from a sugar mama at this point. Nick, do you want to talk about this? It's all right. Everyone has skeletons in their closet. This seems less like a skeleton and more so a dis... Disturbing fetish. <sighs> if anyone needs me, I'll be in the bathtub with a toaster. I can't believe I forgot to leave all the evidence I found there! My reward for this whole headache is money I couldn't use and those three thinking I'm a weirdo! What am I supposed to do with all this junk? Huh? What's this? I don't remember fighting this during the investigation. Where did this come from? Hmm, there's something inside of it. You know? Maybe I did get something out of this after all.
Oh, you're still here. It was just like you said. He accepted and won. I'm really sorry for bringing you here out of nowhere. It's not like me to misinterpret a spell like that. Perhaps I let the worry get to me. I really wanted to help Twilight. I'm glad, then. I would have had you do it, but under the circumstances, I don't think you would have been able to. He might not have been the greatest defense attorney, but he still did magnificently defending one of my subjects. I respected your wishes and didn't say a word. I did have a little fun with him before I left, though. You don't mind, right? That's good. I have wondered, though. I've been avoiding this question since I met you. Can you tell me what it is like? It's boring? Oh, <laughs> that was a joke. It looks like Equestria? I guess I shouldn't envy you then. Maybe, just maybe, it's a little closer than I thought. Well, I think you should be going now. He already left a while ago. I humbly thank you for helping us. I even think my student learned a few things as well. Oh, that's right. You've told me all about him and all the wonderful things he's done. I've been so wrapped up in duties and other tasks. You haven't told me your name yet. May I ask what it is? My name? <laughs> My name is...